Okay, back to me. So um, we are going to talk about an enhancement that we made to the X-plane move, which now allows us to float. But for some of you, I'm going to go over a couple slides to talk about the X-plane move. And, uh, you know, hopefully everybody knows about the step-plane move and the six-plane move. And, uh, you know, that's assuming, you know, parts are rigid and you get a three, two, one locating system. So you got six objects and six targets. And then if you have something like this fender that's got to locate to multiple features, it gets very complicated. And uh, then we'll be giving you a link to a very thorough uh, webinar we had on the X-Plane move and comparing it to uh, other moves. <laughs> but uh, the idea with the X-Plane move is uh, you don't have to think about a 3 two, one locating method anymore. You just pick all of your objects and targets in pairs and define the vector direction that those are supposed to uh, control. And then this X-Plane move will try to minimize the distance between all those pairs of points. So it's a best, it best fits a part using as many objects and target pairs as desired. So it's just like the six plane move as far as objects and targets, and it has directions. Um, but you can define, you know, as many pairs as you want. If you look over here, you can see there's three, there's four up down locators, there's one, two, three, cross car locators and one four aft locator. So that's what I'm gonna to demo today. But prior to doing that, I do wanna go over these key points. When you uh, use the X-plane move for floating, you cannot try to over control it. So you would basically have multiple locators for the non-floating direction. Okay, and you'll see in my example model, which is a pretty basic model, but it will get the point across, <clears throat> okay? The X-plane move does not preserve any gaps. It's going to try to equalize the distance between all the pairs of points, um, but you don't have to worry about, you know, primary, secondary, or tertiary, and it's equalizing it by minimizing the sum of the squares of all those points. Um, okay. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to this model here. And you can see um, I have a simple part with a hole and a slot, but I have two different tools. One of them is showing that, hey, you know, this part's gonna rest up down on six locators. Prior to, you know, this release, we could use the X-plane move, if I mouse over this, you know, and you can see I have a vector going this way and a vector going this way. So, yeah, you kind of can see it. Bad color. Maybe I should go to, yeah, that's pretty hard to see as well. <laughs> but you can see this move, you can see I'm locating up, down, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm using this pin to control. Where's my trihedron? I can't see it. To, to control Y, and this is controlling X, and then this pin is controlling Y. <clears throat> so if I go ahead and um, animate, well, if I if I look at the move first, just so that you can see it, you know, this is the feature move, where I'm just picking, you know, this bottom face, and I added all of these pads in here, so it's going to create the least squares plane through those pads, four-way, two-way, or I can use the X-plane move. In the X-plane move, now you can see I have nine objects going to nine targets with nine directions, and they're the same directions here. The, you know, the difference is this will minimize the distance between all of the objects and targets, where the least squares plane will take all of the uh, ob targets and generate a plane and locate with that. So I've done that with this part, or the green part going to uh, this tool, as well as this piece going to this piece. If I just um, animate this,
and zoom in. Okay, so now you can see with the X-plane move, we have added the ability to float. This is where we're saying, you know, when you do that in the X-plane move, you have to define, if you look in my move here, you can see I have the four-way picked twice. So I have to pick the hole and the pin in that order so that we know, okay, this is my four-way, I'm controlling it this way and this way. And it knows because of the features selected that it's a hole and a pin. And this one over here is my two-way. Going to my two-way here and here. So one of the things, you know, this, this kind of gave you an example of locating a part with an X-plane move um, as opposed to the feature move. Going to a part, a target part with pads or going to a target part that's just got a surface, but we're going to represent that surface with lots of points. Okay, so if I build it all the way to the end, now you can see it's locating to this piece here, also with an X-plane move. And if I hit deviate, it's floating around. But what I'd like you to see is if I separate this, and hit deviate, you can see how I put a tolerance on these three points. Okay, so it's always kind of, you know, when we're trying to locate a surface to a surface and people say, well, what about high point contact? And then I argue, well, what if your three high points are in a corner here? You know, the part's not going to locate to those three high points because the part's very big and it's going to tip and hit somewhere over here. So, you know, we would normally either go compliant and net to all of these points, or we would say, hey, I'm going to pick, you know, two points here and a dynamic midpoint here. And there's all kinds of stuff that we try to do to simulate putting this piece in the best possible position, even if we only had these three high points due to tolerances. So, what I've done. As you can see, well, one, you can see that we have um, a feature measure and we have the X-plane move, which I just shown you that can also now float. I'm going to go ahead and turn these two off. And I'm going to turn these two measurements off also. So that we're just looking. So when I build this, you can see that um, I'm measuring. Yeah, I'm measuring A1 to A1 here and here. Oops. And I'm measuring A4 to A4 here and here. <clears throat> if I do a nominal build, well, let's actually turn off this explain move first. You know, then hopefully these are both zero, zero, zero. Okay, so the key is if I deviate this, and you can see I just put a constant offset, and then I'll go ahead and assemble. If I can, oops, if I can get to it, I'll go ahead and assemble. And then I want to look at these two measurements. Okay, so this one is 0 0.0068. And this one is minus 3.59. <clears throat> okay, that is locating the least squares plane of the green part to the least squares plane of the gray part. Now, if I go ahead and turn on this X plane move, which is going to want to minimize the distance between all the objects and targets. And I build it, or separate it, deviate it, and assemble. Go into these moves now, 0 0.0669 minus 288. 
So you can see it brought this closer to reality based on the number of points that you're picking. So, you know, we can't locate this exactly correct because we don't know, okay, sit on one of these high points and locate the two other points. But with the X-plane move, we can, you know, try to locate the, all of the features selected for the primary plane and minimize the distance between both of them. And then, you know, now we you know the problem is if the X-plane move was a hybrid of the six-plane move, now that's why it's called X-plane, as many combination pairs as you want, the problem was we couldn't float. So it couldn't pick up, a, you know, it couldn't locate a part. It could always minimize the distance and try to center these two, but it couldn't float. So now, you know, with, you know, with this tolerance here, I can nominal build and deviate. And it's going to minimize the distance between all of these locators for the primary and float around on the secondary cursor. So that was the enhancement that we made to the X-plane move. I would like to, I thought that I had it in my documentation. Oh yeah, so it's here. I must have cruised over it. But the X-plane move um, is still located. It's a DLL. It's the DLL is called DCS Move Min Disk Fit, and it's in the DLL, or that's the name of the sub DLL in the DLL MTM Library too.